TCI is brought to you by Spendthrift Stallion Shaking It Up, a brilliant grade one winning three-year-old, new for 2015. Welcome back to TCI, your inside track to the Triple Crown. Alongside Joel Cunningham, I'm John Siegel. Well, Joel, we had a ton of racing last weekend. Man, we need to jump right into it. Tell me, how did it affect the TCI Top 10? Let's take a look at the Top 10, John. We'll go over here to our monitor here, pull up the TCI Top 10. You'll notice here within our Top 5, really not a lot changed for me. I mean, Carpe Diem took care of business. You know, when I look at that race and you look at the list of challenger stakes for older horses, General A-Rod, who's not a superstar, ran significantly faster than Carpe Diem. So raises some question about how good Carpe Diem was. I don't think he beat much in there uh, once the other Stone Street Colt didn't fire. American Fair, we'll see him this weekend. Dortmund did his usual thing with a 104 Byron. We'll talk about the San Felipe. Texas Red, ironically, within my top five, he's the one, his non-action was the one I was considering moving. He better work this weekend or he's going to definitely fall outside that top five. Daredevil, I thought, ran well. We'll talk about him. And then the San Felipe runners, Bolo Prospect Park, two Colts that I think are very hard to separate right now. I give Bolo the edge slightly because I think he's better bred to handle a mile and a quarter. I like his tactical speed, and I think his style, he's going to love Churchill Downs. Firing line, we talked about him. Far from over drops for me. You know, he missed an opportunity in the Gotham, a weak race. I think he had a chance to win there. I don't like the fact he's going to come into the Derby with three preps. And then upstart holding on, ironically, it might be a Florida Derby favorite. He's holding on at the 10 spot. Now let's break down the races. Yeah, and I also see on there it's worth mentioning Kozan and Ocean Knight. Kozan, unfortunately, is off the Derby Trail. Yeah. Ocean Knight, they said the Colt came out of the race fine. They're just going to regroup. they got to kind of see what's going on. But I do yeah. want to talk about the San Felipe real quick because I, I noticed those two new horses on the TCI Top 10. That's pretty rare for you, man. You must really think that was a good race. I do think it was a good race. You know what I mean? I think Dortmund won pretty easy. And look how sharp he was to find himself on the lead. You know, who would have thought he would have found himself on the lead in here? You know, big colt like that. He's a horse that's shown to come from off the pace, not particularly quick. But I think it shows how good Dortmund is right now and how sharp he is. But he found himself on the lead here through fractions that were pretty moderate for that racetrack. I mean, 111 and 1, yeah. not very fast for Santa Anita's track typically. I think he wants a target to run at. So, again, Bolo... I thought a good three-wide trip for Bolo to range up the way he did, give Dortmund a test. Then you saw the real Dortmund kick it in, I think, the last eighth of a mile in there. And look at Prospect Park, a colt that I didn't think had a chance to run much. I mean, he was had an inside trip. I think he wants a pace set up, certainly didn't get that. And he was in a little traffic at the eighth pole, and he had to really wait. By that time, Bolo got the jump on him. Dortmund obviously got the jump on him, but he still rallied and got the runner-up position in here. So for me, again, I mentioned this, Bolo and Prospect Park, two Colts that I still think their best is in front of them. They ran well enough. I think they're going to run better in a mile and eighth next time out. And when I look at a colt like Bolo, I think he, again, with his pedigree, the fact that he likes multiple surfaces, I, I just think I see him as being tailor-made for Churchill Downs. So I thought it was a very good race between those top three. I'll tell you one thing about Dortmund, man. You do not want to get in an eyeball challenge with him because he is tough when he's on the front. He's a really hard horse to pass. He, he looks like he's the real deal. Well, he's on a roll now, man. Like I mentioned, he just paired 104 buyers there. You don't see that this time of year, typically from a three-year-old. And look, I got him at number three. I have two Colts over him. I have the, the, the Barnes first string Colt, American Pharaoh, the champ over him. We'll find out more about him this weekend. And again, Carpe Diem, I, I question, even though he won by five, we'll talk about that performance too, but it's hard to have Dortmund, number three. You know, he it will be number one on a lot of lists. Right. You really can't fault what he's doing. Well, let's talk about Carpe Diem for a minute. You know, it was interesting. They couldn't get him into the gate. You know, this was it was his three-year-old debut. I was a little concerned. You know, it was one thing if you kind of refuse once or twice. They had to get six starters on him. It just seemed like he was a little amped up, but I do think he was very professional and handled his business. Yeah, him being a little nervous, and I think that's just him. He was that way at Keeneland, if you can recall, when he shipped in to win the Breeders' Futurity the way he did. But you certainly don't like to see that. You know, a horse that, you know, is number one on your list come and have all that kidney sweat, you know, sort of act washy and not want to get into the starting gate. I mean, that's not what you want to see when you know the Derby is going to be 100-something thousand people screaming to my old Kentucky home. You want to be able to handle the experience a little better than that. But with that said, he won by five, did it easily. I think he has a pedigree to project to get better, you know, as they develop. I mean, they've, they've been clear about what they want to do here. Two preps in the Derby, third off the layoff for his lifetime best. is what they did with Super Saver, same connections. So I don't think we saw his A race there. I think we'll see a little better next time in the Breeders' Futurity, and we, always, we already know he likes Keeneland. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk about uh, El Kabir. 
It's a very interesting horse for me because yeah. I still don't see him on the TCI top 10. I thought it was an impressive race. And, you know, the jockey said, hey, I had a little bit of concerns about the distance. You know, would he get the distance? He said that's gone now after that last race. He said when he when he asked him, he pushed the button, this horse fired and, and really exploded towards the end. Yeah, and we'll see. I do think he's built more like the Unbridled Song part of his pedigree. He's a longer made colt. Looks a lot more like Unbridled Song, in my opinion, than Scat Daddy. However, I still question how far he's going to go. You know, remember we talked about this is finally his, his chance to sit off the pace, there's plenty of speed in here, even though it was cheap sp speed for this type of caliber of horses. I mean, when you look at the returns in the race, he comes from off the pace, wins impressively, you know, gets back to his winning ways, but yeah. doesn't even get a 90 buyer speed figure. Hmm. I mean, that's concerning, John, as far as, you know, the quality of the Gotham. And that's why, you know, particularly I thought Far From Over or even Ocean Night really had an opportunity to run in the Gotham, yeah. get points and, and run big there. So El Kabir, why he keeps winning, why he keeps you know, uh, amounting points to get into the Derby, kind of like international star. Right now, I'm just concerned about his quality and whether or not he really stacks up with the top Colts of this group. All right, well, let's go down to Gulfstream and let's talk about Daredevil. You left him in the number five spot. You know, it was an interesting race. We both said, how do you draw the rail twice? You know, a little unlucky there. He had to break. That didn't happen. He had to come from off the pace, but you liked his performance. I really did. I mean, I thought, you know, take the San Felipe aside. I thought on the East Coast, you know, when you talk about Tampa Derby and, and the Gotham, I thought the swale, the performance by Daredevil, and again, it's ironic because he was, you know, a big favorite in here and he lost, clearly right. lost. But you know how Goldstream is. If you get a talented horse that gets loose on the lead, like Tom Albertrani's horse did here, I mean, that horse can really run. He's yeah. a talented one-turn horse. But Daredevil, you watch him here. You know, he's really making up ground over a track that's very hard to catch a quality horse. They run fast in here. I mean, the winner got a 109 buyer. Daredevil got a 103. He finally showed the element of being able to rate, breaking from the one hole, being a little sluggish. I loved how he is forced to rate and finish, and I think you saw that from Daredevil. So why he lost the race as the favorite, I project him next time out. You see him galloping out pretty well there. I project him stretching around two turns. Now, question is, will they come back in three weeks in the Florida Derby, put him on the lead? And I think he'd be tough there if they did that. Or are they going to wait four weeks, put him on an airplane, run him in the Wood Memorial, put him on the lead and say, come catch me? I think they're probably going to point for the Wood because, you know, you look at the, uh, the, the owner, certainly, uh, they won the Wood with Verrazano. They're New York kind of guys. So I think that's probably where they're leaning. I think his next race, he's going to be very tough to catch. So Daredevil's another sneaky colt. You don't see on a lot of top tens, yeah. but for us, he's still in the top five. All right, were there any other three-year-olds you want to talk about over the weekend that, that you thought maybe wasn't a, a race that had any points but maybe was a good performance? Well, I mean, materiality is another colt we've always liked for Todd Pletcher. But, you know, they've been very well. You know, they rushed Kozan to try to give him an allowance race to get him a prep for the Florida Derby. They took their time of materiality, which Pletcher likes to do. He likes time in between races. So they ran him in, you know, basically a 1X, even though it was a listed stake last Friday. And he ran a 104 buyer. Now, he ran by another Pletcher horse, Stanford, who I think is probably a sprinter miler type that doesn't want to quite go that far. So for materiality, I thought it set up for him to win the race. But the time was good. The speed fight figure returns are good. I mean, a 104 buyer speed figure in your second lifetime start, this now sets him up to maybe run in a race like uh, maybe the Arkansas Derby, wherever he turns up next to actually be a factor. I mean, he'll be one of the top two or three choices next time out. And we'll, we'll see at that point if he's ready to step up. He'll be going to the Derby with three lifetime starts. Though. That's mighty tough. And that's why I didn't make our top ten. All right, well, we got one race to talk about this weekend, and it just happens to be the return of the champ. American Pharaoh is going to make his three-year-old debut. Yeah. You know, they opted to go into the Rebel in here. What do you think about that decision? We know he likes a mile and a 16th. Oakland speed usually holds. I look at the field of seven. There's no other speed in there. Really not much else in terms of quality. I mean, Bowl Conquest, I think, can run a little bit. And we liked the truth or else last time at 20 something yep. one and should have won despite a wide trip. So I think, you know, be interested to see. But the truth or else is he's pace-reliant. There's no speed in here. So really, it's an over-under of how much is American Pharaoh going to win by. I mean, I really honestly think, John, this is going to be a public workout. As well as he's doing right now, I don't think any of these other horses are going to want to try him early because they're happy running second and third to get the points. You want to start accumulating points and, and give them an opportunity to run next time out in the Arkansas Derby or whatever their final prep is to get points to get to the Derby. So why would you ruin your race trying to go tackle American Pharaoh, who's going to be loose on the lead in here? I think they're content to not do that. So I think American Pharaoh might win this race by 8, 10. I mean, who knows? He wow. has the capability to really blow the doors off this group, and it becomes an over-under for me. How many lengths is he going to win by? Yeah, and it's, Bob sounds pretty confident. You know, he's always, 
you know, pretty cautious on what he says. But when you hear him talk about this cult, you can just tell he's, he's kind of got a special place in his heart for him. He just says he's, you know, he's a really talented horse, does everything very easy, just a real professional kind of a cult. Yeah, I'd be shocked if he didn't blow the doors off this group. I mean, I could see him to where they take him in hand the last eighth of a mile, and maybe the truth or else runs at him and closes the gap because he's really not finishing. But the way a, a race is going to set up, he ought to blow the doors off this group Saturday. All right, thank you, Joel. Yep. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you come back next week. We'll recap the Rebel, and we'll talk about the Spiral and the Sunland Derby.